There were some, they looked like the head of a Titan missile. Yes. Like a yes. Tr- rocket mean? boob, but it was natural. It looked like a football, like an areola, like a football, yes. an areola that went up to the first like white uh-huh. ring on a football. Yes. yes. <laughs> Big D, they, you're talking about the same boobs. I'm talking about the same boobs. Yeah. Remember when we first met John McClane? Argyle picked him up from the plane and took him down to Nakatomi Tower at the Christmas party. And the terrorists were overzealous, but it was sweet when they killed Ellis. And with a little help from Welcome back to Chat the Movies, the podcast where we answer the question, were the movies we loved when we were growing up really that good? Have you ever caught yourself thinking, why don't they make movies like they used to? Can you still remember spending your Friday night searching for the perfect movie rental at Blockbuster Video? Do you know what Blockbuster Video is? If you answered yes, and this is the podcast for you, I am one of your hosts, Gene Lyons, and alongside me are my co-hosts, Ash Jacuzzi Ruski Palmer. Hi, y'all. And Big D Dick Ebert. Party, 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 party. And each week we take a look back in time to decide if our favorite films still hold up. The movies we cover are chosen by you, the listeners, who generously commission the films you love. If you like to see all the movies we have covered, will cover, or want to choose one for yourself, please visit shadpod.com and have a look. At the end of each podcast, we'll provide you, the audience, with the number of wipes each movie takes to get off your respective butts. So thank you so much for listening. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and share with a friend. It's how we help the podcast grow. Additionally, subscribe to our sister podcast, Chat on TV. We review TV series such as Westworld, Taboo, American Gods, Game of Thrones, True Detective, Lovecraft Country, and Watchmen. Find all our information and past episodes at chatpod.com slash TV. And finally, to hang out with us live, follow and subscribe to our Twitch channel, chatpod.com slash Twitch, and our YouTube channel, where we play video games, host watch parties, and edit this podcast live. All that being said, Big D, what movie are we reviewing tonight? Well, Gene, Ash, this is going to be an exciting night for me. We're going to a place that I remember vividly as a child, you know, starting to learn my body, starting to go through the change (laughs) of becoming a man. And uh, this is a a genre which we really have done surprisingly so few movies when this was such a big part of people who grew up at this time, coming of age. So this is one of our great listeners, Scott H's, I think his second or third commission recently, And he asked us to go to a place to go get some private time, to get some lotion, some tissues, maybe some scented candles, uh, and just sit out and review the 1984 American sex comedy, Hard Bodies. And he was great enough to call in and tell us exactly why this movie meant so much to him as a young boy and now as an adult today. Hey, Shaq Crew, Scott H. from Friendswood, Texas. I want to thank you for accepting this commission of the 1984 movie, Hard Bodies. I first saw Hard Bodies in 1984 on HBO. HBO was eh, a couple years old, and they used to send these guides out in the mail and announce their schedules. Me and my friends would always look for the ones with N in it, which meant nudity, I guess because we were 14, and I only had two things on our mind, sex and sports. So we taped it, and uh, we watched it, and of course we loved it, you know, but little did I know that I had taped over one of my dad's Dallas episodes. Oh, no. He didn't like it too much. Came in the next day. What the hell is this? I haven't missed a Dallas episode since 1979. <laughs> so uh, I got in trouble for that. But anyway, I know it's a crappy movie. It doesn't hold up very well. But at the time, we thought it was great. So go ahead and chat all over it if you want to. Doesn't matter to me. It's still a guilty pleasure movie. At least get give it, you know, 4.5 for boobs. It's got plenty of boobs in it. So anyway, take care. See you all later. Have a great day. Bye. Scott, I'm starting to see a theme here with the movies uh, that you pick for Shat the Movies. A couple weeks ago, we had Perfect, uh, and now we've got Hard Bodies. Lots of yes. gyrating, lots of leotards and swimsuits, and really fit people. Now, on the Perfect episode, Ash wasn't able to join us because she had just been in a car accident. Uh, but we do have her here tonight, so the, the Texas connection is complete, and I'm so excited to get her take on this film. Yeah, Scott, I was so bummed to not be imperfect, although I'm sure you can understand. I lived in Houston for a full 11 years before a serious car accident. So I know you know the miracle that that was because like this place is crazy. But I'm really excited to be on here with you, Scott. This was a first timer for me. And if I'm going to do it, I'm glad I'm doing it for one of my, my local Texans. So shout out to Friendswood. 
Hard Bodies is a 1984 sex comedy about three middle-aged men who hire a younger <laughs> man to help them pick up women at the beach. Starring Grant Kramer, Courtney Gaines, and Gary Wood, Hard Bodies was followed by the 1986 sequel, Hard Bodies 2. The film was originally made for broadcast on the Playboy channel, but Columbia Pictures picked it up for theatrical distribution and apparently to share it on HBO. So Big D, Ash, we always ask what your memories are of the movie we're covering. Tonight, it's Hard Bodies, and as the only person old enough to remember it, we'll start with Big D. <laughs> so I feel like I have to do this story every time we get to this time frame. For the people, our listeners who are younger than 40 or 50, who grew up on the internet, I got to tell you, people, this was a dark time before the internet. You did not have access to adult content. I remember when people would find their father's stash of Playboys. My father had a Playboy calendar down in the basement. And when you would get these momentary flashes, if you were watching a cable box back in the day, like adult content, it was it was triple X, but you had to pay for it. None of my friends had it. I didn't have it. But we figured out if you would go to like channel 99, which was the channel, and you would wiggle the toggle, you could get a momentary like three or four frames of full hardcore porn. And to a young kid, that was like gold because you didn't get to see any of that in the local magazines in the store. We had to settle for like the Skinamax, the raunchy like sex comedies, which the 80s are known for. I remembered Private Resort zapped hot dog the movie we've done porkies uh, but strangely as a kid who loved these and shared them with their friends much like scott hard bodies before he commissioned it was one i had never seen yeah it's my turn now to be confused because you guys are always mixing up one like movie for another and you think we're gonna see you know one thing and then it winds up being you know christine or something well this one i thought this was porkies I thought we were going in to watch it. I was really confused when I went in to go start doing like notes because I, I always pull our buckets up to like read the plot of the movie before I watch it to just kind of like orient myself of like where those markers are. And I was like, huh, this is weird. I thought they already did Porky's like before I came on the pod. And then I watched like the whole movie and then realized it was something completely different um lots of titties still but completely different film so um who knew that's an understandable mistake though ash because porkies is like the big one what everybody talks about and there were lots of these exploitation movies of the 80s that big d just mentioned but hard bodies is kind of a, a lesser known one and it's it's a little different i i almost hesitate to lump it in with the rest of them because one you get way more boobs per hour than the other ones but two there's these like little moments of heart and like kind of <laughs> kind of like some lessons in there that you didn't get from porkies which was far more cynical i think a film see but i think there's a big difference in the tone of these films and watching now and going back retrospectively the 80s like this this movie we'll get into it probably didn't turn me on there was lots of boobs this wouldn't be like something that would get me excited as a young boy today, nineties and the two thousands stuff got more sexual, more sensual, more erotic, like wild things. This seemed more goofy and frolicky and fun, like an innocent learning of the other's body. And it, it didn't seem to be as sexy for me. Interestingly, I was more turned on by this than most movies. Like I'm not turned on by like showgirls. This though, no. this one, but there were just some real fucking good looking people in this movie. I was into it. I think the difference is like 1984 sex scenes. It's always like where the sex is like finishing. They never show foreplay in the early 90s. And like what you're talking about, like Wild Things is all foreplay. Like that's what that whole movie is. And I think that's the differential is like they're not even sweaty. Like that's one of the funniest parts is like sex is so not sweaty at all in this movie. Like they're, they're they act like, you know, they're just like beautiful and, and normal and, you know, not out of breath and, you know, clearly just, you know, finishing up nicely and politely. Well, you don't get sweaty when you're a hard body. That's true. That's no, true. no. You, where your cardio is on point. You don't sweat. But even you're... the old people, even the middle-aged people oh, are like, Ashby I can do is... this all day. No, Ashby that could. Guy Ashby fucks. almost had a heart attack. He, he needed a break. But Ash, I need to ask, uh, Scott and I, this was a, a shared thing that young boys did in the 80s. W was there a female equivalent of this that you or your friends would be like oh my you have to see this movie i was one when this came out 
No, I don't. Obviously, I'm saying in your time frame, was there um, was it like oh Twilight? Wow, you have to. So see. I'm too old for Twilight. Like I'm definitely in between Hard Bodies and Twilight as a as a elder millennial. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, that's a really good question. I remember. And this is an 80s film. We all rented that Tom Cruise movie and tried to pause it to see his penis. Top Gun? All the right, all, the no, the all the right moves. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the one with the masks. <laughs> <laughs> Not eyes wide shut. Um, but I remember doing that because we all wanted to see a penis. Um, I mean, Wild Things was definitely something everybody watched and thought was super sexy when I was uh, when I was growing up. Um, like about that time, right? Like where I'm like the appropriate age for it to be something. Definitely that one. But I don't know. Like for us, it was less, you know, show the skin and more like sexy seduction scenes more than it was like actual. Because like penises aren't that. I mean, no offense to the two of you. I'm sure your penises are fine. Thanks. But like they're not that great to look at on screen. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. Like, show show it. It's okay. Like, power to the penis. And I'm, I don't want to say that because that sounds anti-feminist. But, like, you know, power no. to the people who want to see that. Absolutely. But, you know, they're just not, they're not attractive. I and mean, women's bodies just, I think, are inherently more beautiful. Well, I mean, come on. None, they say bumping uglies for a reason. If you really get a look, we're talking this, it could be the face of wow. from Aliens. Wow. I, I love them, but it resembles a flower mixed with an Alaskan snow crab and, and something else. They're, they're, none of the organs are very attractive. I disagree. Yeah, I got to disagree. It's a work of art. I mean, what kind of, I mean, yeah. Like I, that, no, I, li- I like it, uh-huh. but I'm saying if you just looked at it on its own, yeah. what are you looking if you were at? in you space, at like- you would run from it. No. Wow. <laughs> What's it, the trailer? <laughs> Columbia Pictures proudly presents a minor motion picture event. A film with absolutely no redeeming social value whatsoever. A film that has won not five, not three, but absolutely no Academy Award nominations. A film that luminaries like Bergman, Fellini, Spielberg, and Lucas had absolutely nothing to do with. A film that every critic in America has unanimously hailed as a motion picture. This is Hard Bodies. The film that will teach you important new words, like hard bodies. It means perfect little foxes down on the beach. BBD. It's a bigger and better deal. And wuss. Yeah, she said we got a lot more class than an immature boy like you. Oh, man. That wuss. That wuss. It will answer important questions. When it became a romance. You want romance? I read novel. You want me? I'm upstairs. Expand your language skills. My friend Rag here is multilingual. He's flipping you off in 48 languages. Explore the wonders of nature. Look at these hamstrings, these gluteus maximus. This is the body of the 80s. To travel where no man has gone before. And how to effectively plan your day. First, we'll make love. Then we'll go for a jog. And then we can come back and make love again until we bounce off the wall. Sounding like your eggs. Hard Bodies is stuffed with fine dialogue. It's over easy, okay? Lavish costumes. The latest in special effects. Well, is everything turned on now? Everything is now. And an important message for all. Party, 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 party. It runs about an hour and a half, raised the Encino Gazette. It's shot with movie film, just like E.T., says the Schenectady World Bulletin. And Utah Today calls it absolutely the best film we have seen this afternoon. If you see only one movie this year, then go see this one. Also, Hard Bodies. If you don't know what they are, you don't know what you're missing. Scotty, a con man who does whatever he can to get along, is evicted from his apartment for non-payment of rent. He soon meets three older divorced men. Hunter, the sleazy leader of the group, Rounder, the jolly one with a secretly giant member, and Carlton Ashby, an eccentric Texan. The men have a lot of money, but lack a trait that Scotty possesses, talent with women. So for, I want to take kind of, uh, I'm not sure if he's a con man. I think he's just a young guy who's, he's not out there actively conning people. Do you think he is? 
mm-hmm. mean, he and Rags are literally talking about the next con they're going to pull. But scam, but we, they call them. But, but we yeah. don't see it. He says, "I don't want to do anymore. I'm over it. I don't want." To. So I don't, it's not like he's out there scamming people out of money, other than the landlord. But I don't think he's that bad of a guy. And I think when we meet him, he's an attractive guy. Everybody on the beach likes him. The ladies love him. He's good looking. But his life is a disaster. He lives. The girl, first girl, goes back and she says, "Oh, you saw his dump." You know, so he has to develop this philosophy that helps him hook up. And it's hilarious. And it's, it's called dialoguing. And when he's dialoguing with the, quote, hard bodies, which are perfect little foxes out on the sand, he gives them what he calls the BBD. And this is not BDE. This is BBD. And it is the bigger and better deal. And I think today, as a 50-year-old man, that he has some form of a good understanding of the way that the world works. He knows you can't be ugly, old, and poor and be successful attracting the mate that you might want to. You could be two of the three. It's like Gene in marketing. You can be fast, good, or cheap. You you can't be them all. You got to pick what you're going to do. And in the world we live today, where there's the OnlyFans, where there's uh, sugardaddy.com, I think Scotty was on to something here that if you're not in a relationship and you're trying to meet, there is a trade of something. Okay, let's back up a second there. You're saying Scotty's not a con man. Con man, short for confidence man. So this is a person who tricks people into thinking something is true that is not true, right? This guy is telling the BBD, the bigger, better deal, essentially making people oh, okay, believe okay. that there yeah, is something the bigger and better than there yeah, actually okay, is. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. There, I would argue still a comment. But, yeah, okay. But getting to the transactional sex part, I, I mean, Hunter, uh, he, he shows up, and I'm figuring these guys, like, they're there to spend some money to get laid. That's what it seems like, right? They get the big house, they got the nice cars, they get the outfits, and they're offering women, you know, jacuzzi time and wine, and they're in implying that there's going to be cocaine. But then when he's hitting on this woman right up front, she's like interested in fucking him based on what he's offering. And he says, Oh no, I don't pay for sex, sir. Did you not just lease the best (laughs) couch on the beach? Did you not just hire a man to teach you how to pick up women? Like, isn't that exchanging money for sex? Yeah. You know, I always laugh at these guys and these situations in movies and especially like in real life as well, because there's like these real confident dudes who are like, well, I would never pay for it. But yet they're going to go to the bar and they're going to buy all the shots, not just for the girl they want to sleep with, but for their like their ugly friend. Like they're going to buy all those drinks. You know, they're they're going to pay for whatever they want. And that's still paying and some way it looks different than like a true cash transaction of like, you know, what, 250 an hour or whatever. I don't know if that's the going rate. I don't know if that even sounds reasonable. Amsterdam, it's 50 euro for 15 minutes. No, I didn't. I never got a time wow. when I went. It was per act. I'm talking about sex. Yeah, I am too. When I went there in 98, it was like, I think they called blow and whatever. Like you could, Blow and you could, go. Like you could buy a combo, which I thought was stupid because you were <laughs> wasting your money. You were getting one load for the price of two. So yeah, I think everything changed around I want to say 2016 or something like that. So they the basically the whole industry changed in Amsterdam after that when they like fully fully legalized. They have a guild now and all that stuff and it's, oh, nice. it's a timed basis. So it's the going rate like in the red, red light district is 50 euro for 15 to 20 minutes depending. Which is funny cuz like I just I I keep bringing that up cuz I'm planning on going to Amsterdam and people are like that's expensive. I'm like no one is taking more than 15 minutes. They're professionals. No, that's a good yeah. deal. Like, you think what you pay for that, I mean, that's two hundred euro an hour. So I think two fifty is probably pretty appropriate, yeah, right? Right. Like you know, so I mean, it isn't that, but you're you're paying for it, and and the girls are also aware. Like, be be warned out there, guys. Like, you may say, "Well, I don't pay for sex." Like, the girls understand that it's also transactional in 100%. that way, and it's why we're willing to accept drinks from some guys and not others because we're willing to enter into a transaction with that guy and not others like we're not like stupid and blindsided and just charmed because you offer to buy our whiskey neat no and i want to make make it clear out there that I, I don't judge anyone i think you use what you got as long as people understand the deal if it's an old guy who wants a young girl and he can provide and pay for her rent or whatever exchange it you're cool with the transfer of whatever you're receiving i think it's great i think it's free trade 
What makes Hunter's position so weird, too, is it's not like he's there to find a wife or something right. like that. He's literally there just to get laid. So the, exchanging money to get laid seems like the best deal possible. Here's what you do. You pay her. You bang it out. Then you spend the rest of your time just relaxing on the beach. Enjoy your mm -hmm. house, man. Movie's over. 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Plus, he would have been more successful because he would have been more relaxed. He mm -hmm. wouldn't have been all bottled up. It would have just broken the seal. And then he could have enjoyed the beach house and everyone would have yep. come around. Bam, bam. Well, let's talk about Scotty a little bit more here, because I have to tell you, in this opening scene, I was immediately transported back to college and not like in a fun, reminiscent way and like a, oh, wow, like I regret many experiences kind of way. Because um, ladies, I'm sure you can support me here. A lot of dudes are really gross that are this age, that are Scotty's age. I remember there was this one guy and like he had like a private dorm room, but he shared a bathroom with like the person in the private room right next door. And like their shower was so disgusting. Like the hair was like caked around the outside of the rim, like on the bottom of the shower. And it would look like, you know, how like your caulking sometimes gets like moldy, but it wasn't mold. It was hair. Like it was disgusting. And lots of guys had similar situations. So when she opens Scotty's fridge and it's just nasty in there, or when he slaps the fruit fly with the spatula and then just wipes it on his shirt and still wants to make her eggs. Like I knew this guy and I remembered how off putting that next day was like those mornings after war and immediately was so glad to be in my forties and not back at Tulane and college. And let's be clear here, ladies, this goes both ways because mm, yes. I've been to the house where you have nail polish on your carpet and cigarette burns yeah. and your bathroom is a fucking disaster. And that for me is a deal breaker. It always has been like, that's just not going to happen. But I know I'm truly old because I live in a college town. I live in Tempe, Arizona. And when I'm walking the dogs around, there'll be these houses where like, I know eight dudes live. And the yard is a mess and the house is a mess. And I'm thinking, you're eight young men. How do you not have the wherewithal to get up in the morning and clean up your damn yard and clean Where's your house? Where's your chart? And the reason why is because they're pulling lots of tail and they don't give a shit. So yeah. good for them. But you can't deny Scotty. I mean, listen, the house is a mess, but he looks good. He this does. This kid, Grant Kramer, I did not expect Scotty to look this good. When the movie opens up and we see him, he's like a poor man's Rob Lowe. He's got the great eyebrows, the great eyes. He's charming. And I thought, okay, he's one of those guys that we didn't really know was in a movie called Hard Bodies. But then you start to look at his filmography and you realize that he was in a bunch of good shit. We just didn't recognize him because he was matured or whatever. No, like this guy, all his roles were sort of in B-movie features and like bad TV shows. And it seems like a real shame because he's got star power. I think he's more like a discount Zac Efron. A little shorter. He's the beach guy. But have you seen him? What he looks like today? He, he looks, looks good. I thought he looked terrible. Well, maybe you've seen, because the, the picture I've seen where he still has got hair. I mean, for, <laughs> for his- start. Okay. No, for, I'm saying for, for mid-60s, the, the photos that he has on his IMDb, he looks, I mean, good for like a 60-year-old, I think. Now he kind of <laughs> looks like a discount Mark Summers. Yes, yeah, yes, I'll give yeah, you that. Yes. Yeah. But no, he does. He does look good. He looks good. He is incredibly charming. And he's the best part of this opening for me because like he is so charismatic. I was like, oh, yeah. well, maybe this is like a real movie. Like this is not like one of those like crazy, like cheapy movies. He made it feel like like a real film. I would argue the best part of this opening is the fact that there were titties in the opening credits. Mm, that is were. an achievement in and of itself. Yes, he's likable. And I think I would make a recommendation <laughs> to you two. If you go back, try to watch the trailers before you go watch these movies. Because in the trailer, I, I, what? What the fuck did I say? What did I say? I'm like, I'm like there's titties in the opening credits. Like, that is an achievement. Charming. You're like, yes, he is likable. Oh. Yes, he's a solid young man. But oh. enough about boobs. Who has the wherewithal Kramer. to well, clean no. his home. No, because what I'm saying is in the, tra like, in the trailer, <laughs> they give you everything you need to know. They're like, it's the best <laughs> film I've seen this week, says the Oklahoma Times. They're showing that this is going to be a fun movie. They're gonna, it's not going to be a serious movie, like you said, Ash. And it's going to be boobs. It's going to be wild. And it's it set me sure. off on the right foot. Sorry. And yes, yeah, I mean, I think we all knew from the title, Hard <laughs> yes. Bodies, it probably wasn't yeah, going to be true. cinema. The marketing was on point. Yeah. <laughs> 
A hunter, rounder, and Ashby offer Scotty $600 a month plus room in their beach house and access to their cars if he returns the favor by teaching them how to pick up women. Scotty shows Hunter, Rounder, and Ashby how to dialogue women by giving them a dose of the old BBD. Along this journey, Scotty falls in love with an acquaintance named Christy. So I know the movie title we talked about is that famous shot from like the neck down, bikini, the hard bodies is in the title. And I don't want to talk about them because everybody, Gene, you said they look good. This is the beach crowd out in L.A., but 80s, like normal people, that's the people I want to focus on here that are in the background every scene. And we've said this multiple movies. And the one that comes to mind all the time is Caddyshack. When we see young Skilly, like the actors who used to be fat, like the, the people we think of as overweight, like Rodney Dangerfield. In Caddyshack, he's not that big compared to today. Today, he'd be considered skinny. Chevy Chase, very skinny. Danny, skinny. It just was shocking to us. And watching this movie, you can see how Americans, they have physically changed their appearance. When you read the stats, when you hear, okay, in 84, there was 15 to 20% of adults who were obese. And today, it's more than twice that at 42 to 45%. And that today, childhood obesity is over 20%. And we talk about heart disease. When you, when you read those stats, that is not as dramatic as looking at this film. This does not look like America today. It's completely different. <laughs> what? I mean, you, you're just like, you're coming in like representing the the older listener. Uh, Let's talk about heart disease Gene, and processed Gene, foods. Gene's talking about the goddamn people not fucking taking care of their yards. This is what we're becoming. <laughs> this, is, this is phase two of Shatha movies. It's, Speak it's, for we, yourselves, gentlemen. Okay. Speak for yourselves. <laughs> Yeah, but, but you know, Sarah and I recently cut 16 and 8 pounds since the beginning of the year, respectively. And I I feel like an asshole because whenever I do this, whenever I go through a cut, I look around at everybody around me and I start judging them. I, I judge them for being inactive. I judge them for being gluttonous in their diets. And to be clear, I don't think that's okay. Like, I don't think it's okay for me to think that way. It's unhealthy. People should do what makes them happy. And ultimately, if somebody says, hey, I'm happy just gaining weight and eating awesome food because I love food more than anything, that's totally cool. I don't truly think less of a person for being overweight. And I totally get it. Sarah had made shepherd's pie for St. Patrick's Day. And I thought, let's just fucking sit here and eat the whole thing. You know, sometimes I would rather get pizza delivery and play Battlefield 5 all day than do anything else. That sounds like probably the most appealing thing in the world. But then I think about things like Big D, you're talking about, you know, heart disease and stuff, not being able to get up off the ground, uh, not being able to climb a wall without having like a, a true disability, right? When it's a self-imposed disability, like just being overweight and inactive, it seems like such a waste of human potential. And this really like changed for me when I was in high school because uh, I was in Air Force Junior ROTC. I thought it was a very smart guy. My grades were like off the charts in school. I was in every, you know, advanced placement program and every gifted program and everything. And so my uh, my aerospace science instructor is like, hey, you got to you got to start running like you got to get in shape. I was, you know, I was overweight. Uh, and I was like, why? Dude? Like, I'm smart. Why the fuck would I need to use my body for anything that's stupid? And it was like, yeah, but the the pinnacle of existence, right, is not is is to be balanced in both those things, excel in both things, and you're fucking out of shape. So you need to get it together. And it just became like a motivating factor in that fact that I was like, no, you're absolutely fucking right. Like, and I'm not saying everybody needs to be a hard body, but big D, you're right. Like we have as a as a society, right, really let ourselves slip. But I don't really blame people. I, it's just too fucking easy. It's too fucking easy. Cheap and easy. Cheap and I, easy. I need to know if I'm being judged by you right now, because what the fuck do you mean by climb a wall? I don't know if I can climb a wall. Like you Spider could climb Man? a wall if you had to. No, like like a six foot wall. Like if you oh, had to I get over a wall, a you could yeah. do that. There are well, people who can't do that. And I'm not judging. And again, I'm not judging. I don't that, but know. I'm saying How would I do that, though? You jump up, you grab the top of the wall, and you your feet until you get over it. If you like had to do it. Like getting out of a pool. If your child, if your child was in danger on the other side of a six foot wall, you would get over that wall. Well, no, like I mean, I I run four days a week. Like yeah. I I I'm an active person, but like I don't know if I can climb. Well, a wall. I, th I think your height would hurt you a little. I'm five. Like, so let's foot go. Two. Let's lower the wall, Gene. Well, like I said, I can jump a, a person fence. without any disabilities, like being very short. I can. I, hey, I can jump a fence. I think she'd be fine. It's kind of the we're, same. We're not right? judging you. How do you know that? How do I know I can jump events? I don't know if I can jump. I have to go get 
balls for my kids that they throw over the Oh, like sets. a chain link fence. No, like, like, like a, a like, like a, a wood picket fence. fence. No, like a six foot fence. Really? Yeah. You can I get over a wall if you can get over a fence. Okay. Well, I don't feel judged then. I'm not but talking about I'm not talking about like a compound wall in Pakistan. Well, I thought you meant like that ropey thing where you're like having to like ropey up the wall because I have no upper body strength. What at are you all. invading Bin Laden's compound? I don't know. Like in the movies, you're like, get over that wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can do uh, that. Everything leads back to major pain. Yeah. Or Arrested Development was really the reference I was going for ah. there. Um, but I'll tell you this as the individual on the podcast with a very severe eating disorder, um, this, this movie did give me a panic attack for a lot of it because I remember thinking that this is what all women's bodies had to look like mm. in movies like this. And, you know, there is something about a high thigh cut swimsuit, like bikini that's so eighties and nineties that I thought that those women that wore them, which by the way, only really tall women look good in that mm-hmm. cut of a swimsuit. But I thought that's what you were supposed to look like. But I, I want to call BS on one thing. Like, yes, has America gotten fatter? Absolutely. But America wasn't skinny then people weren't put in movies though that weren't skinny like even in the backgrounds they weren't you know you mentioned that like a lot of actors that were quote-unquote like overweight in film today would be considered normal looking like there is something that's positive about that i i am glad that my kids are growing up in a world where there's more inclusive body types in film and i'm thinking about like a renee rap who i have a serious girl crush on like she's not some skinny mini like she's you know got hips and she She's got, you know, a little bit of like, you know, some baby fat to her everywhere. And so I think that's a good thing. Like Hard Bodies is a movie that could not be made today just because of how inclusive you have to be. And and I think that's an all right thing. I mean, my daughter sings a song daily about having fluffy bellies and how hard bellies and fluffy bellies, all bellies are cute and all bellies are okay. Like, I'm glad we progressed a little bit from everybody (laughs) in films looking like that. I don't think we could cast this movie today. You'd have to cast internationally to find this many six packs. No, I mean even could... the geeks on the like the the boardwalk who are fishing, they had six packs. I could I could go on TikTok right now and cast right. this movie. Right. I mean, these people it's exist. I'm just saying, you know, it wasn't a good thing that everybody looked like that on film. No. Um, but speaking of like making over or people changing, you know, you talked just a minute ago, Gene, about how like how strangely like you were kind of surprised that this movie had moments of heart as compared to movies like Porky's, right? Mm-hmm. In this one, I was surprised by these really charming little interludes. And one of them for me is I loved when they were doing the makeover scene. And I am a sucker for a good makeover scene as cheesy. They're always cheesy as hell, but I think they're really, really fun. And here you've got your big haircut reveal where they're spinning him around in his chair with like the colored, you know, little apron curtain thing that they take off of him. You got your Hawaiian shirt reveal moment and it's kind of precious. Um, now, I do think that a movie that does this better is years later with crazy stupid love with ryan gosling when he makes over steve carell clearly they were inspired by a scene like this but the heart is there and it's a reminder that most of the time what gets the girls is confidence and actually giving a shit about what you look like you don't have to be skinny or have a hard body you just have to have a little bit of swag about you What's interesting is in this scene, we get to see what really works. The BBD does not work. What works is inviting people to a party. Mm -hmm. This is such a genius move. I'm really disappointed in myself for not doing this more often when I was younger because it's such a low pressure thing. You invite the person to the party. It's not hitting on them. And if they show Mm -hmm. up, they're genuinely like interested at least hanging out and getting to know about you and your friends it's such a good move and they do it in such cute ways a little ice cream with the party on it yeah love it yeah message in a bottle <laughs> you know like like pinning the invite into like the clothes they're cute mm-hmm. but ash with the makeover okay i, I get that they're, they're putting hunter and some more like i don't know like village people pro- leather proto gothic yeah whatever the fuck he's doing i get that they're they're trying out the hawaiian shirts on rounder that's fine but ashby they get rid of his hat. Yeah. Like the yeah. hat is Ashby's thing. It makes yeah. him look so much better because he's got that kind of longish, like neck length hair, but he's bald on top. And this man already had his style figured out. At the beginning of the movie, he already looks cool. He's got like a Burt Reynolds sort of thing going there. And I, I, I mean, Ashby's just fucking cool all around. 
Yeah, I think what they call the, the the art of the deal, or what was that one that Roger always talked about, that book about the pickup artist. Where they mm-hmm. neg him. That you need a piece of flair. Ashby's got it. The beard. You don't touch the beard. You don't touch the hair. Dude, the fucking six-shooter lighter. <laughs> He's money. Sexy. He is so money. And I don't know why Scotty is he's breaking from what he's supposed to be teaching because the the BBD is three things. It says uh, faster car, richer boyfriend, hotter action. These guys have got money. Why are they not throwing money around more? Yes, they got the house, but I know we talk about all the time now and we're becoming the old person podcast, but this movie made me feel so fucking old. (laughs) This was like an insulting wake up call to me as has the how the world views somebody 40 plus and people who are younger. I've hit an age where I, I think it's about 45 where I feel like I'm the same. Like as I get older, I feel like I'm the same outside. I can still do pretty much everything I could before. But now this film tells me, you know, that I'm invisible and it was hurtful. I think I'm a fun 50. I, I do. <laughs> I am a fun fifty. Gene, we went on that trip uh, yeah. for your bachelor party, and yeah. we ended up in that little waterside town. And that group of people was shocked that I was fifty. That little waterside town is referring to Ash as Natchez, Mississippi. Oh my god! Yes, they were surprised that I was fifty. I could be a cool, and this hurt me the way that they dismissed these old guys. The you were a- cool in Natchez. I don't no. know if <laughs> no, he Shut was up. legendary on Frenchman as well because he would carry around like a case of Sutter Home little wine bottles. And it was like Hansel and Gretel. You could find him just by following. You knew which <laughs> bar he was in. Is he in DBA and is he in Snug Harbor? Or is he over? Oh, nope, nope. He's over at the Spotted Cat. Just follow the bottles and you'll find the bottle man. Yes, my Pinot Grigio. Oh, my God. But Vanessa goes, why are there like $35, $10 purchases from this one shop? <laughs> I was like, those are four packs of wine bottles. Yeah, that was that's what it was. But even, Gene, if you read the, the synopsis of this film, they call these three guys Dumpy, Frumpy, and Lumpy. Yes, they're old. But when you look at it now, Rounder is 38 when he filmed this, the actor. And he looks like... Uh, what's his name from George Seinfeld. Costanza? He looks like Costanza. Then you got Hunter, who's the Jerry. He was 39 and he looks good. He should be able, I think, body wise, Gene, you kind of rolled your eyes. Yeah, he looks he, like, like Bobby Darren or some shit. He, he looks like, you know, he goes and he works out. He was 39. Ashby, the old guy, was 45. And the, and the people are throwing around lines. The girls are like, I don't fuck fossils for free. That was hurtful. Now, I'm not thinking, hey, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to go try to find some girl. But I would like to believe that I could go out and at least get these girls to come to the party and have them want to sit around and talk. And that life doesn't end at 45. I think it's all about knowing where to look. Like these guys are just, they're playing it all wrong to begin with. Like I think I'm a reasonably attractive person. I'm in okay shape. I make good money, whatever. Even so, I would not go to a college party to try picking up a lady. Let me tell you, actually, even when I was that age, I would not go to a college party to try picking up a lady because that's just not my scene. I would definitely not use dating apps. I'm not judging people who do use dating apps. I'm just saying it's it's photos and set criteria, and I'm not what a person on a dating app is looking for. I'm no expert here, but I think that a, a guy our age, Big D, would do better by leaning into his lifestyle and attracting a younger woman who wants that. Right. There are lots of younger women who would love our lifestyles, respectively, rather than trying to emulate the lifestyle of younger people where you just look like a fucking loser. One hundred percent. There is nothing more off putting than when older people go into a young setting to hang out with young people and think that it's cool. Like it's not. It's it's creepy as fuck. Um, and here's the deal. Like when I was this age that the hard body girls are, I dated older dudes. I dated guys in their mid thirties, their late thirties, like that were, you know, well adjusted and were a huge like relief compared to a lot of the guys my age. And if I were single today, I probably would not date someone 40. I would date someone older than me because like there's an appeal to people having their shit together and being established and, and all of that. And I think that at that age, no older guys would have found me at a college bar. Like I found them at work events or like interns or like at places where I was interning. And I think both of you would do fine if you were out there. You may not do great on Tinder, but what the fuck would you be doing on Tinder? Like go to a bar, sit at a bar and you're going to find a lady, you know? 
You know what I couldn't do when I was Scotty's age? I couldn't uh, ask a woman to go on a trip to Europe yep. because I couldn't afford it. You know what? You know what Hunter could do? Talk about the BBD, the actual BBD. You have it. Be like, hey, you want to go to Paris for a week? Let's go. I bet you Paris. Wow. Ooh, and they'd be gone. That's it. Never been out of the country before. And then there's your transactional sex. There you go. Now, Scotty mentioned that he hoped that we would find some value in this film. And- she just calls Scott H. Scotty. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Scotty H. Yeah. Now, now Scotty, Scotty H. from Friendswood. Now, Scotty in Friendswood, Texas, uh, said that he hoped that we found some redeeming qualities in this film. And I do want to say that it is resoundingly charming. And the way I know I've been charmed is that normally I would take exception with the film telling us a story by giving us a string of ands without the therefores, right? There is really bad writing in this movie that I absolutely love. Hard Bodies makes it sort of charming. There's a scene. The guys are throwing a party at the beach house. They got everything in place, right? They got the beer, Budweiser, of course. They got snacks. They got the babes. They got the beach right there. It's a beautiful night. And Rag shows up and he's like, Scotty, the band canceled. They're doing a bar mitzvah. (laughs) And Scotty's like, oh, no. What? Because apparently in 1984, beach houses didn't have a thing called a stereo. Like they could have just play music. They needed a band. So Scotty says, I know just the thing. And I'm like, okay, he must have some hookups some people he knows, like something, a friend. No, he hops on his Vespa. He goes around the corner and he happens to go by a garage where there's a girl band, which mm-hmm. is played by the actual band Vixen, that has never gigged. They're all dressed up, looking cool. They got all these cool songs. They happen to all be in the rehearsal space with all their gear, and they are ready to go with a full slate of songs for the party. This is just stupid. It's a way to introduce the band Vixen into the movie, and I'm all, I'm here for it. A diaper Rash. That's the name of the band, <laughs> diaper, diaper Rash. rash. But what he could have done, and again, Gene, like you're saying, it, it's there. They just want to get to these plot points. So they could bring them in. He already earlier established that kick-ass stereo in that little Mercedes when he was taking the ladies around. Just yeah. pull that up. That could be like the the centerpiece to get all the girls to understand the BBD. Tell everybody just go in the waterbed room. It's got lasers. It's got lights. It's got music. Smoke. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As Rounder and Ashby find its success with women, Hunter finds himself frustrated with a hard body named Candy who talks dirty but isn't promiscuous. After a night out, Hunter won't take no for an answer and gets aggressive with Candy until Scotty stops Hunter, who fires him. Hunter also misinforms Christy that Scotty has been intimate with Candy, then begins trying to woo Christy for himself. So, Scott, you gave us perfect. Another movie that seemed like it had a super thin plot that would go nowhere, and I ended up loving it. Hard Bodies is no different. I thought it was going to quickly run out of material, and there were times when it felt it might. Like There's a part in the movie where I felt it was struggling. Okay, We're on the beach. Each of the guys is coupled with a lady. I'm like, where is this going? Ashby's playing a guitar while Nichelle is just doing like naked yoga. Rags is trying to cop a feel. Scotty's falling in love. Rounder is off in a limo with Dee Dee. Okay. The movie has reached a dead standstill. And then suddenly they kick it into high gear again. Ashby's playing guitar, but he's also getting a blowjob. There's titties <laughs> popping out everywhere. And just when I think it can't get any weirder, Dee Dee comes bursting through the limo's <laughs> roof, still riding Rounder's cock. There's another scene where Rags, for no reason, he's like the skinny freckled guy. They put his head on a lady with these giant double D tits, and he's just kind of mugging for the camera. They had wild ideas in the writing room, and they just went with them. My favorite is she goes through the sunroof and it's clearly paper. Like oh, yeah. it's like cellophane and paper. And all I could picture is like how they were cueing her and like how many times she had to like throw herself out. Like it was, it goes up there as one of my favorite shot moments, as much as I love the Wolfman exploding and that stupid monster movie that we did. Like this was amazing. So, Gene, you're right. Normally we would attack this, but there's something endearing about mm-hmm. it like that i should be cringing at some of the dialogue when they're talking about hey did you hook up and she goes my lips are sealed i bet they weren't last night <laughs> come on that shit <laughs> was great yeah or well dip my skinny like all of this is ridiculous you got all 80 shit those jet surfboards what so dangerous that's so dangerous <laughs> they were so cool though. this this movie is so fucking out there and from the moment that we met the guys Hunter, Ashby, and Rounder. There's something redeeming about them. I thought they could have been much more degenerative. 
I expected them to be having wives, families. They were going to be out there openly just buying girls like it was like a brothel or they were going to be treating these girls more like a commodity. Here, they're trying to put the work in to get them. They have successful businesses, but they're embarrassing. This isn't like Chevy Chase when he always tries to be either smarter or cooler. These guys are embarrassingly inept at meeting women. They bumble. They stumble. They humiliate themselves. That initial scene or set of scenes where Scotty's mentoring them, it's embarrassing. But they're not that bad of a guys. And then Ashby, he is a fun dude. He could get girls anyway with his manure business. Just talking about sill and manure and cow pies. He could get the girls. I think Hunter goes a little bit astray. But for me, Rounder, he is the worst member of the group. He lies continuously. And there's something that seems like it's dishonest about the way he's trying to go about it. He pretends to be a photographer. He takes advantage of these obvious dumb girls who haven't heard of a, of, of a casting couch. And there's a whole line of these girls as he lures them upstairs in this cringeworthy scene where they're lining up. And he's like, hey, you know, why don't we just take your top off? Oh, did I forget to take off the lens cap? And then later on, it turns into guess the size of Rounder's putts. Fuck this guy. Fuck him. I got to say that Rounder's not great, but Hunter is so much worse. Like Rounder, yes, he's a creep. He tries to look up skirts. He lies about being the photographer for the modeling agency. But Hunter, I thought he was having like a decent moment when he intentionally spilled wine on the woman, but then was like, hey, you can go into that bathroom for some privacy and clean your shit off. Maybe giving her the option to then come out with her top off. But then he just opens the fucking door on her like a fucking creep. He's Tarzan yelling in the morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, he does that whole like yeah. ba -ba thing, which is terrible. And then he tries to pretty much rape Candy on the beach. I think he's way worse than Rounder. I don't think Rounder would ever force himself on anybody. I love that this is even a conversation <laughs> because I think the moral is they both fucking suck. They're assholes. They're sexually manipulative. They sexually assault women or at least like give it their best try. And it was at this point in the movie that like how you were talking, Jane, about how it kind of just got like kind of stagnant for you. I started having a really hard time watching because their behavior up to this point was silly. It was just like, you know, whatever. But then it got to here and it reminds me of that scene in Revenge of the Nerds where everybody thinks like, oh, it's so cute that Lewis puts on his Darth Vader mask, but he's actually good in bed. But it's like, no, he raped her, right? And just because you suck at getting women doesn't make it okay to lie and manipulate them to be with you. And this part of the movie annoyed me. I thought it was super cool, though, that on the beach scene with Candy, yes. Scotty steps in and he's like, no, like, fuck that. That's not OK. You have crossed the line. Like, stop it. And he even tries to give Hunter like an opportunity to save face. Like maybe he just made a mistake there. And likewise, when Rounder's doing his whole photography thing, we see Christy getting upset about it. And she's like, no, this isn't OK. And, you know, it at least acknowledges the fact that these things are not OK. They're not cool. They actually say it. Scotty says, no means no. What are you doing, man? That's progressive for 84 in this type of film. It, it was, but then Scotty follows it up by looking at Candy and saying, like, why are you talking dirty to guys if you're not going to put out, right? Like Whoa, that, no, that's no, no. kind of bullshit. No, but I think what he was saying, he wanted to get to the point that she said, I'm afraid people won't like me. It was his haphazard and embarrassing right. way to get to that point. But like, you know, I don't know. It's it's very progressive for the 80s, but it's also very 80s that like a guy yeah. has to step in and be the one to save the day for sure. But, you know, I think that Candy, this is another moment where this movie does have some heart to it in a way that other movies like this don't because she like broke my heart where she says, you know, I just want them to, to yeah. like me. It was sad because I think a lot of women know what that feels like where you feel like you have to be certain like a certain way or sexualize yourself in a certain way for, for guys. And I was shocked that in such a silly film where we've just had somebody literally fuck their way through a limousine you know moon roof um that right after that we get you know a little bit of feeling and not only that but they were thoughtful enough to set it up earlier in the movie like they thought of plot arcs here like when yeah. scotty earlier after the first party he tells hunter flat out candy is all talk she's a bit odd you got to kind of leave her alone like this is her reputation you know just know what you're getting into by the way, in that scene, Rounder is icing off his dick. Is he icing off his dick because he fucked too much or did no. he have blue balls? He had blue balls. Mm -hmm. Okay. He had blue balls. Is that a real thing? No. No. 
Not like that. Why wouldn't he go jerk off? He's a 40-year-old man. He knows. Just go rub one out. He's not like some teenage boy who's like, oh, I don't know what to do. My dick hurts. Go jerk off. I mean, that's it what feels his mom so was there for. Go pull out that juicy hog, Rounder. Come on, go do something. But what about Rag? Was his name Rag or Rag? Rag? Yeah. yeah, Rag. Rag thought it was nice that he ended up. I thought somebody was going to maybe he was going to get somebody drunk or pity sex or whatever. But he actually found a girl who liked him for who he was. Well, Christy, knowing Scotty's playboy past, initially deals with his ups and downs, but later insists that he changed his ways. Scotty recognizes that Christy is ultimately more important than the empty life he has led. So we've already established that Hunter is a dick, but I want to take it a step further and relate it back to something we talked about on previous podcasts. I said in the all cops are bastards rebuttal that marketing ruins everything. Taking responsibility for my own profession and understanding that people who think we are sleazy are absolutely right. Hunter makes this full heel turn where he breaks his vow to Ashby. He starts inviting these creepy, like fucking creepy old business yeah. associates to the beach house so they can meet women. And Big D, you mentioned a brothel. They're treating it like it's a brothel. Like they're just mm-hmm. going to come there and these women are supposed to pleasure them. Ashby, because he's cool as shit, he calls him out and he says, hey, like this is against the deal. You're an asshole. And then Hunter reveals that he and Rounder have an idea for a TV show called Hunting with Hunter. That's going to be bankrolled by one of the creeps at the party. It's going to be basically showing how to dialogue. You're going to put it on TV. Again, this proves my point. Marketing ruins everything. Like commercialization of things ruins everything. They had this cool beach town with cool parties and cool people. And now these guys are going to come in and ruin it. I thought it was a great little aside. Again, showing this movie. It's got some depth and complexity. It reminded me this idea of like girls gone wild. Like, you know, Joe Francis reminds me of like a younger version of Hunter here. And it's just such an embarrassing idea the same way that was like, who the fuck would watch that show? What network would produce that show? I get trashy reality TV. I love trashy reality TV. Like give me any day that show the ultimatum or love is blind. I think that shit is hilarious. But this like. Uh, The answer to who would broadcast this VH1. You guys never saw the pickup artist? And they Roger did, did. They did a show. It was mysterious. The best-selling author of the pickup artist, he would start the episode where he would give a lesson. Then there would be a guy who didn't know how to pick up girls. He would then teach them the lesson, and they would put him into a bar, and mysterious would then have, or mystery, would have, like, talk to him in an earpiece and <laughs> tell him what to do. Did he have his flair? He, of course, yes. The guy had to, they had to pick out a flare, like a hat or a feather or something, or goggles. A feather? Or something like. Fucking like Robin Hood. <laughs> uh, yes. There. Literally, yes. A <laughs> giant feather or maybe welding goggles. Something that was ridiculous. <laughs> and they'd go in there. It lasted two seasons. So somebody watched it. Wow. Big D, earlier in the pod, you, you talked about the scrambled porn and the possibility of maybe seeing a playboy and just how rarely we got to see nudity uh, as kids. And I just want to salute this film one last time before we close out, because I don't think kids today understand how precious a film like Hard Bodies was to children in 1984. Okay. We did not have porn sites. We did not have streaming video. We no. did not have cam girls. Okay. If we were lucky and this happened like twice in my life, and I remember those moments, like photographic memory, I remember them finding a playboy behind a dumpster or like hidden yes. under a mattress. The only boobs we we're going to see other than that were in movies. And most movies we're going to show you like a pair of boobs. And it was like the big deal. Maybe if you were talking like a really, really exceptional movie, you might see like six boobs tops. Okay. Hard bodies. Oh, it is so, so generous. I saw so many kinds of, of boobs in this movie. I'm 43 years old and there were kinds of boobs I didn't even know existed until I saw this movie. And the filmmakers, they knew what they were doing. Like they were not just going to show us some boobs. They were going to go hog wild. They were going to get absolutely ridiculous because they went above and beyond the usual times we'd see a boob. Okay. We are trained professionals here. We've seen a lot of eighties movies, you know, sleepover. Mm-hmm. You're going to see some boobs sex yeah. scene. Of course you're going to see some boobs. Yeah. If there's a shower involved. Boobs, absolutely. Okay. And I expected all of those. But then there's a scene. They're in a ballroom. Everyone's dressed up. There's these fitness models and a band performing. And I'm like, okay. And then this woman (laughs) just whips off her top and starts to helicopter them titties. It's so much fun. It's a celebration. I'm here. So I have two things that I want to say to this. The first is I need to know what kind of boobs did you not know existed? 
There were some, they looked like the head of a Titan missile. Yes. Like a yes. Tr- rocket mean? boot, uh, but it, it was it, natural. It looked like a football, mm. like an it areola, like a football, yes. an areola that went up to the first like white uh-huh. ring on a football. Yes, yes. <laughs> they, they, you're talking about the same boobs. I'm so talking you're about talking about thing. triangle yeah. boobs. I, I'm, no. t- I'm talking about the ones that look like the Egyptians depicted them in yes. like hieroglyphics. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hieroglyphic <laughs> boobs. What else? Yeah. Dee Dee's boobs were like an interesting pair of boobs. Mm. I didn't really yes. expect those. They were like smaller, but kind of cool. Yes, there was a lot of smaller, like 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 firm, tiny nipple boobs. But it yeah. was a it was it was a cornucopia of boobs. <laughs> yeah. I texted Gene. I tried to tally because I care about quantifying things. I'm a data guy, so I'm watching <laughs> and I'm trying. I showed Gene my notepad where I was like, "Boobs X, boobs, boobs, boobs." We get to the photo shoot. I had to stop. It was just boobs everywhere, and it was a, a beautiful display. Of, of 1980s attractive young women's breasts. Hmm. I feel like this is the movie where if you watch it again in the background, there's probably boobs you never probably even noticed because you were yeah. paying attention to the foreground boobs. Yeah. It's like haunting at Hill House, but instead of ghosts, they're boobs. And yes. even in the movie, Gene, the girls talk about why do guys like these so much? They don't yeah. do anything. What do I they- don't get it. It's they're they're com- The girls decide it's because we don't have them, but I think I they're mean, just comfortable. I think they're aesthetically beautiful. Are they? I mean, they I think just, they are. They're boobs. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think they're that big of a deal. But I will say this to you. Like, I agree with you that this had to have been very exciting for 80s people in terms of porn, right? Because they weren't able to access it. And guess what? In Texas, we're going to have to watch movies like Hard Bodies because we don't have access to porn here now either. I don't Uh know if either of you have followed legislation, but Uh Pornhub and other porn sites now, if you go to them in the state of Texas, you're now required to upload your state-issued government ID to the website, which goes into a database that will track the porn you watch to your ID. Otherwise, you're not able to watch porn here anymore. Elections matter, dickheads. Ooh, the, you know, the ooh. funny thing about this is, is that all those like barstool sports like Republicans, those guys are going to be shifting their voting patterns real fucking quick when shit like this hits the fan. Well, yeah, they thought we as liberals were coming for their guns. We came for their porn. Yeah. God, wouldn't this be great, Gene, at this point, if we could talk about uh, the, our sponsored Nord VPN? Wouldn't this be a great time? Hey, in Texas, why don't you use Shat VPN? Do you want to surf your type of porn without the state Do infringing you on your rights? Do you need hard bodies in your life? Yeah. Do you want to see them helicopter titties without having to upload your ID? If you're out there in Texas, uh, you can join our Discord, and I'll just stream porn to that at all times. <laughs> oh, Shout on porn. Egyptian yeah. titties, everything. Maybe we can have like a theme each day. Because, you know, you want to meet the masses. Some people like, you know, the the amateur, the anal, the pegging. Ah, it was, you, I, you know what? I'll take an Amazon over a pegging any day. <laughs> an Amazon over? What, what does that mean? Amazon position? You haven't seen those? No. no oh, was- girl. What is you can't watch it now. What okay. is that? So imagine, okay, Amazon is, imagine missionary, right? Okay. But the dude's on the bottom, okay? He's uh-huh. got his legs up, like his heels like around his ears, oh, his feet I are up in the you, air, yeah, but his butt. dick is pointing up and then she gets on top of him. And so she's the one doing the thrusting. She's in the dominant position. Where are his legs? Like around, like his knees are by his ears and his feet are up in the air. Like a woman would be in missionary if she was getting like really railed. Huh. Like, Why is it called an Amazon position? Because I guess she's just being such a I warrior. Think Am- Amazon women are they're they're yeah. domineering. I think. Yeah. Were you just going to try to imitate wa- that? Uh-huh. Are you yeah, are you that, that are you that limber? Yeah, I do jujitsu. You ever no try to good. blow yourself, Gene? Come on, at any point in life. Oh yeah, as a child, yes, of course. Because as you're a child. Because yeah. you're flexible. Could you get anywhere close to doing it? No, 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 no. But if you mm-hmm. could, you would have. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. You would you would have tried it at least <laughs> once, right, Gene? I would never have left the house. Yes, I've tried it, of course. <laughs> okay. Mm, I haven't. See, you're the one who'd be most likely to be able to do it, Ash. You're compact and flexible. Well, yeah, but I don't have a... I, I, it doesn't matter. I've seen women who could... Penis. Who could fillet themselves. Yeah, you did, it, you, did it Amazon. you did it in Amazon. You did it in Amsterdam. It was 50 euro for 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, now's the time of the podcast. We give our chat score for hard bodies. The chat score is our way of telling you how many wipes this movie would take to get off your respective butts. Zero wipes is a perfect movie. It's when you just share a dube and talk it out. And five wipes is an absolute disaster of a movie. It's peeing on your own shoes. Big D, we'll start with you. What is your chat score for hard bodies? So the trailer set my expectations for this movie. It did not disappoint. 
I sat and watched this with my sister-in-law who's going through a hard time. And this movie <laughs> had us laughing like you would not believe. It is cringe-inducing. It was a trip back to 84. Like, I don't remember 84. And I really, ironically, I enjoyed every single minute of this movie. It was fun. And you know, now that I'm a little bit older and I may be a little bit aged, but you know, I still go down smooth. I'm going to give this movie a three-wipe score. I don't understand this big that you're saying you enjoyed every moment of this movie, but you're giving it a below average score. Dude, it's not a good movie, dude. It's <laughs> it's really not a good movie. It's I ironically enjoyed it. I is it or is it not better than Red Dawn? Mm. No, no. I would watch Red Dawn today. Red Dawn had zero tits. Zero. This was movie, a rape scene. Well, the tempted rape. Attempted right, just, rape. Just like candy. Yeah, I know, but I'm telling this was this was it, I shouldn't I I enjoyed every minute ironically. Let me just say that. I enjoyed this much more than Porky's, which I think was mean spirited. I thought this was fun. I liked it. Uh it was something so different. Again, so different from what we've done recently. I feel like enjoying something ironically though would imply that the people who made the film did it earnestly and were not in on the joke. I think that hard bodies filmmakers were 100% in on the joke. Like they knew exactly. Okay. I think you're right. I'm going, I'm going 2.5 audible 2.5. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, I think you're right. Score here. You made a good point. You're not influencing like 2.5. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to come in. I think this is an above average movie. Just barely, just barely an above average movie. Uh, For all the reasons that you mentioned, big D, I I really like some of the actors in this. I thought Scotty was great. I thought Carlton Ashby was great. Even Hunter was great at being a, a douche nozzle. Uh, so that part was fantastic. Lots and lots of incredible boobs. Uh, and it just had some heart and took some interesting uh, takes. Uh, when Dee Dee leaves the the hot dog stand or whatever, that cook that came out and looked out the window and was pissed off, he looked like he was legitimately mad. Like he was he was <laughs> acting really well too. So it's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I'm going to go with two wipes uh, for hard bodies. <laughs> Okay, I think you guys are a little nuts here. I, I mean, I I enjoyed this movie, but do I think it's a good movie? No. And I think this is like where our score system gets complicated because I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. I like what you said, Big D. I think that at the end of the day, it wasn't mean-spirited, and I was expecting it to be mean-spirited because movies like Porky's like are mean-spirited. Mm-hmm. And this wasn't. Um and I and I did enjoy that. I did enjoy watching it. I enjoyed the process of watching it. But is it like a good film? I mean, no. I mean, it's it's silly. It, you know, doesn't really have that great of a plot. It's fine paced but it ends kind of predictably and i i don't know i i don't think it's a great film um i originally was going to give this 3.5 which was way 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 too harsh like way too harsh um which is why we do this that's why we talk about things so i'm going to call a little audible of my own i've enjoyed it so much talking about it with you guys that i'm going to say that it's not a great film it's an enjoyable film i'm gonna go- call it perfectly average at 2.5 wipes wow Oh, wow. Get okay, out the well, calculator, Gene. Yeah, I got to I, do I, that. I mean, like, I enjoyed talking about it with you guys. I think I think that's the main thing, is I really enjoy talking about it with you all. So. I think it also works because Scotty is so likable. Yes. Oh, that shouldn't have anything to do with it. it but it does. But it does. I, I agree with you that. You root he, for him. He makes, he makes it watchable. Okay, so... We got two and a half wipes from Ash, two and a half wipes from Big D, and I'm coming in at two wipes because it's an average wipe score, and I know this is going to be controversial, but you need to watch the movie before you judge us. Judge thyself. Mm -hmm. 2.3 repeating wipes for hard bodies. Nice. Jesus, that that now ties it again in this giant block that we did recently uh, at 163 with a whole bunch of films, Natural Born Killers, Vice Versa, Great Outdoors. Harley Davidson, The Marlboro Man, Species, Young Guns, Ronin, Santa Claus, Bram Stokers, uh, Money Pit, oh Demolition God. Man, Casino Point Break, and Rocky IV. I, I know. I'm sorry about Bram Stokers. I, this I, is I, as good as Species. Like, Species and this are both silly films, but I enjoyed them the same. You guys loved Harley Davidson, The Marlboro okay, Man. I, I did. That. First of all, Species did not have as many boobs. As but Species bodies. is a fun fucking movie. And I think Bram Stoker's Dracula only had eight. Yeah, but this Maybe isn't six. the boob rating. This is the shat rating. 
Oh, it isn't no. the booby rating. No, this is this is the the Skinamax. This is a a. a but it's a, as enjoyable as Species. It's as enjoyable. Oh, much more. I would rather watch this than Species. I would oh, yeah, rather 100%. watch Species than this for sure. Oh. But I will say fucking bram stoker's dracula i want to put out there to the listeners listeners i need your assistance because the only way this will happen is with immense amounts of peer pressure i need you to flood our inboxes (laughs) with requests for us to redo fucking bram stoker's dracula in a special episode i will happily edit it we can do it live if you guys want to do it live that's a live but we are going to motherfucking redo (laughs) That review, because Big D, you were wrong, I, sir. I, I admit I was he, wrong. You know that all he's going to do is just point out once again that it looks like old-timey effects. The old-timey effects. This is old Hollywood. I don't I don't remember what I had a problem with. Also, that. what that's going to do, much <gasps> like a vampire, is it's going to resurrect all the fucking Blade Runner people. They're going to be like coming for our throats, too. Well, the, and well, I'm you're fine redo, with that. You're going to redo Bram Stoker's Dragon. They're going to redo it. Blade Runner. Come for us. But- Tell us, do you want us to do it live? Do you want us to do a special <laughs> episode? Because I am sick of it. I will not abide it anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for Hard Bodies. Big D, what do we have coming up next week? Gene, next week, a spoiled rich kid has plans for Hawaiian cruise. But when they backfire, he winds up lost at sea and taken advantage of by a gang of salty old sailors who are only willing to give the snooty guy his come up. It's commissioned by Sam P. Came out in 94 and... I do not believe that I have seen this film. I was so pleased that I got to watch it on St. Patrick's Day with an incredibly intoxicated Sarah. And she gave it uh, two thumbs up and also said that she didn't really care for Gangs of New York. So I have married well. I love Gangs of New York, but I also love this movie. When's the last time you saw Gangs of New York? Like a year ago. Those fight scenes with a gene, 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 gene. Were, were there musical numbers in that? In some no. of the fight scenes? What are you talking? <laughs> I feel like some of the fight scenes, it was like maybe like yeah, a West just, Side. It was, it was the edge. It was the edge from U2 just jamming on his yes, guitar. Yes, that's what it was. Okay. okay. It's so I bad. I like Kings of New York, but I don't know how to fight. I mean, apparently I've now learned I can probably You can climb, climb a, a wall, wall, but you can't. But I can't you fight. No, you'd be like that lady with the claws and the teeth. Yeah. I yeah, could do that. That'd be you. Just rip the shit out of people. You got the hair for it. I don't know if it's a compliment or not. Yeah, he's like a big, she's that big, crazy hair. Big, think. whoa, again, he's digging wow. the hole. Hey, as a Persian, if I tell you you have big, crazy hair, that's a compliment. I'm going to accept it. All right. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Scott. Thank you to all the commissioners who make this podcast possible. That concludes this week's episode of Shout the Movies. Sure, follow us on social media and share with a friend. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram at Shout the Movies. Email us, host at shatpod.com. Support the podcast by shopping our Amazon affiliate link, buying our merch, or by commissioning your own movie. Find all the information by visiting our website, shatpod.com, where you can also leave a speak pipe message and let us know what you think of a rewatch of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Also, check out our sister podcast, Shat on See Me. Shat on TV, <laughs> where we review TV series such as Lovecraft Country, Westworld, True Detective, Taboo, American Gods, Game of Thrones, and Watchmen. Find all information on our website, shatpod.com slash TV, wherever we find podcasts can be found, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. And if you stop by Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star review. It helps the podcast grow. On behalf of my co-host, Ash and Big D, I'm Gene Lyons. Join us next time for the following movie. Touchstone Pictures presents... Here's how a harem girl dances. Okay, well, uh, thank you for that. Whatever that was. The motion picture that's so big... So they were... So charming... I'm at my wit's end, I can't... <laughs> so manly... <sighs> it's sure to be a classic for all generations. Perhaps. You've been like the drunken, abusive grandfather I never had. Cabin Boy. Phil Cummins. <laughs> It's the story of a boy and his love affair with the sea. This moron got on the wrong boat. (laughs) Now he's getting a taste of the sailor's life. Is it true it's unsafe to drink seawater? That's a new one to me. It's the most amazing journey ever. Okay, moron, you go stand in the bow and let us know when we're coming close to ice. Okay, you hit one. He never dreamed where the winds of fortune would blow him. (laughs) Where the spirit of adventure would hurl him. Or where the hands of fate... Come on over here, honey. ...would grab him. These pipes are clean! Touchstone Pictures presents... What happened to...
to you? Well, let's just say I've finally shed my feminine side. Chris Elliott. So this is what you guys do for fun? Humiliate an imbecile? <laughs> Cabin Boy. <laughs> you couldn't be cuter. Hey, would you like to buy a monkey? Hey, Big D and Gene. It's us, oh, us shit. Steve. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's us, Steve. The Fuck, sorry. The what the hell? What is, is happening? Whoa, oh, hold on. Which one? Which... I do not run the soccer league. I don't know who does that. I've never done the soccer okay. league. Which? Oh, like, that's I, can't... I don't know how the hell I can do. Like... Can do. Can do. Jesus. All right. Should we okay. get started? Yes. We are recording.